Hey YouTube, this is Ezra here. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a unboxing of a and my experience with the Ubiquiti wireless access point for Enterprise. Um, so here is the box. And I ordered this from Amazon, it's about $85. And it's supposed to be a alternative to more expensive products like the Cisco Aeronet, which um, by itself, a Cisco Aeronet is at least $200, if not more, depending on which version you get. So this is supposed to be a cheaper alternative for maybe small business home use, somewhere that doesn't need something that's super crazy um, or as robust as probably the Cisco product is. So inside it has a, uh, a wall mount plate, or this is a ceiling mount plate actually. So you can mount this in the ceiling. It has a pass-through for the network cable on the side. And it has the instruction manual. Unfortunately, you're gonna need more than just this to set this up. You're gonna need the internet <laughs> because it's actually much more complicated, a lot much more complicated, but it's more in depth and involved than what this manual leads you to believe it is. And that caused some of the negative reviews I've seen on Amazon. It's just kind of hard to set up. Um, it comes with the screws to mount this to your wall and also a toggle type setup where you just stick in you know plastic inserts into your wall so you can have drywall mounted um, access points and that's as far as the box goes and it also comes with a, uh, a power over ethernet adapter now what this does is you pass data in through one end, so you connect this what this end to like your switch, and then the, if you plug this into your wall uh, outlet, and it injects power into the Ethernet cord to power the actual device. So you actually don't need a power cable that's separate, like a little power brick connected to your access point. It's all powered through this, which is an inline power injector into the Cat5 cable and then that powers the access point. So you only need one wire running to your access point if you were to wall mount or ceiling mount the uh, access point. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna have this in the networking closet attached to the, between the switch and the patch panel that this that the router or the uh, access point is gonna be connected to. And that's pretty neat. And for the device itself, here it is. It's a, uh, I think it just, bigger than six inches in diameter. It's a UFO looking white disc and it has a, a LED ring to indicate status and it will flash amber if it is uh, not ready or if it's not adopted yet and it'll, it'll be a solid green if it's ready to go and it's producing its, its setup pretty much. Um, you can disable the green so it's, it's not as obvious. It's actually quite bright. You'll see it clear as day. I mean, or, it's so easy to see like at night or when the room is dark, it's just like glowing bright green. So there's an option to disable that in the controller software, so that's pretty cool. It's less hidden, it's, it's, or it's, uh, it's less obvious that there's something there. Um, but you can wall mount this. It has a, it comes with the wall mount plate attached and it has a 100 base T network um, network port on the bottom here, and the reset button for this device is actually right next to it too. To reset it, you just press and hold the button while it's on for seven, at least seven seconds until it flashes a few times and then goes blank. That means it's reset. And that is how you do it to unassociate it from a, uh, an, a uh, controller uh, server. So the controller server uh, software comes on a disk and from my experience, it didn't work too well with 10.8 or OSX Mountain Lion. Uh, I don't know if that there's a newer version, but the one on the, the one on the disc that, that came, comes with the product does not work with uh, OSX out of the box. So that's unfortunate. So I ended up using the Windows 7 version or the Windows version. I installed it on a Windows 7 machine, and it does need Java to be installed, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. <clears throat> so it needs Java, and it essentially installs a controller software 
that has its own web interface that installs its own web server onto your computer, which you then access through a browser on the computer itself or a computer remotely, how have you. It's, a, it's enterprise again, so there's a lot of server and client, like, um, it's a server and client like method that they use with this. So the controller software, pretty much you set the SSID security, you can set, you know, what channels the these run at. There's actually no web interface on this device. So if you plug this in, it gets an IP address, but you can't access, there's no interface on this to access um, through a web browser. You can SSH into this, however, it's it's not really recommended, I guess. They want you to use the controller software, which then is a front end for SSH, running SSH commands on this. So that's how that software works. Um, you need the you need the software or the computer running the software and all of these all in the same layer two device. So that'll be your switch, the same VLAN. Um, this can't be on a different like um, network per se, and you can't really control it off when it's in a different network. So that's one caveat with this. Also with Windows based controllers, you're gonna need to open up the port for SSH outgoing. And you're gonna also need to open the inbound port for 8080, which is the default talk back um, port for this to the controller software. So um, you're gonna to need to open that up for the, it seems like the adoption process, otherwise it won't work. Um, it'll get stuck in adoption, and I couldn't really figure it out until I just disabled the firewall altogether, just to see, and it, it worked after that. Um, I had to figure that out after a few resets of the this device. Um, but once it's working, it, it, it automatically like sets this up with the SSID you specify in the software, the channels, um, and the security is all done through the software. Once you plug it in, it just pretty much manages this automatically. And that, I guess, is the enterprise aspect of it. You can also set up guest networks. So you see like those buildings or offices that have like a guest network along with a captive portal, which is probably, which is what you would see like at your McDonald's. It's like the license agreement. You can set something like that up with the controller software. The controller software actually hosts the captive portal. So Anything on your guest network will have to pass through your controller software first to authenticate and then they'll get internet access. Without the controller software, the captive portal does not work. So that server controller software also acts as your captive portal server or your web your website, internal forwarding website, uh, what have you. So that's pretty much it. Um, there's nothing really else to talk about. Uh, this is gonna be, I bought this for my parents' remodel. They're remodeling their home right now. It's gonna be done in, around the end of the year. And I plan to put two of these in the house, one in the networking closet, because it's the closest point, and it's closest to all of our bedrooms anyway. And one across the house by like the media or the TV area, the living room. And that should cover pretty much a good portion of the house, if not the whole house. And I will update my a video, or get, I guess produce an update video explaining my experience with this and hopefully it turns out okay. I'm expecting it to be pretty reliable. It hasn't, I've been running it at my my place for the past three days or so and it hasn't gone down or it's been pretty rock solid. It's actually, it provides a higher, more, higher, my, uh, my phone, rates it as a, a higher like reception than my uh, my Asus RT N16 that I have here running tomato uh, USB uh, by Shibby. So I expect this to be pretty robust and reliable and um, yeah that's pretty much it. The Ubiquiti Wi-Fi system for enterprise uh, the access points. Alright, thanks.